Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Haiti. In this video, we're gonna be talking about panoramas. What does it take to create a great panorama in the field? How do you shoot that? And then how do you stitch that together later using a really simple process in Lightroom that allows you to create really big photo files with a ton of photo detail within those. We're gonna get into that right after this. Okay, just one second guys, I need to pause this little drone montage just to give you kind of a public service announcement about this video. Now, when you go out into the field in landscape photography, a lot of times it's really, really windy. And that was the case today. I had to get this pano shot because I wanted to get the information out to you guys and conditions were perfect in the sky and everything was setting up right. So I wanted to go ahead and film this, even though it was really windy. I even had a windshield on my mic and it was still cutting right through that thing. So just bear with the wind noise for a second in the next five, six, seven minutes, and then we'll stitch everything together. And I promise there will be no wind noise in my office when we get to the Lightroom part of this video. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the video. Now, today we're talking panoramas. How do you create a great panorama when you're in the field and you're trying to plan everything out to create this amazing shot that's like a 180 degree sweep from left to right or going top to bottom in a photograph creating a stitch that's long ways as well. Well, you first have to start by planning everything out. You wanna be sure that your plan is going to go into a great photograph. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you get into a field, you wanna be sure that you know where everything is going to happen. That's why my first step of planning out a pano is pulling out photo pills and seeing exactly where everything is going to happen. So I can easily take out my phone and I have this pano planned out so that you'll see where the sun is going to set and it'll be in the left side of the panorama stitch. So I can just open photo pills and hold up my augmented reality. And while looking at the augmented reality, I can really see where the sun is going to set at a specific given time. This is gonna let me know when I need to start my pano so that I can create the photograph that I've envisioned in my mind and have that sun on the left side of the frame. Now there's also an island out in the middle of the ocean here as well that I wanna have right on the other side of the sun and have that kind of left middle within the frame too. I can go ahead and look through my viewfinder and see exactly where all of that is going to line up within the panorama and get out here and start scouting this location and setting up and being sure that I'm gonna get everything within the correct composition before I start taking the photograph. That's what's really gonna set you up for a successful photo when you're planning everything out. So basically you just wanna to plan to be sure everything's gonna go right and then start setting up your gear. I have my tripod with me right here and I just wanna be sure that this is really, really steady on solid ground. If you're not on solid ground or the ground a little bit uneven feel free to adjust your tripod legs what you want to be doing here is getting your tripod exactly level and most tripods have a level on them if not you can buy attachments on Amazon I'll link some of those below in the video description for you as well you also want to be sure that your ball head is level now most ball heads also have levels on them but that's just going to ensure that when you start spinning your camera around in 180 degrees, that everything is going to remain level. Now, if you're unsure, you can go ahead and spin your camera from one side to the other and be sure that your horizon line stays in the same spot when you're spinning your camera, being sure that that horizon line is within the same spot from one side of the pano to the other, and that's just spinning your camera from one side to the other. It's really easy to do and see if you're level and setting your camera up before you start taking your photo. So I've got a really wide sweeping view here, which is what I want with a pano, and usually you get those in those really big grand overlook 
viewpoints or if you get like on the side of a sea and you have a really wide sweeping view you can create interesting panos that way too or small intricate details that you can use to create panos as well but this one what i want to do is start right over here on the left side and kind of sweep all the way over and there's a telephone tower on this side that I want to stop at and what it's going to do is it's going to line up the sun as it's setting on the left side of the frame we're having that island right next to the sun and then the rest of the part on one side you have this like jetty that comes out from the country of Haiti itself and it's going to kind of lead you from the right side of the frame all the way up into the mountain and then lead you back to the sun. It's these things that you need to do when you're setting up a composition in the field to consider what's going to look good, where are the clouds, is there enough interest in the sky, should I add more space in the ground if there are no clouds? All these things need to be answered and try to limit the amount of boring space within a photograph, but also not clutter your image with too much going on. Now for me in this panel specifically, I'm using a 70 to 200 telephoto lens. All the gear that I use is linked below in the video description, but I wanted to use a telephoto to kind of re really zoom in on the subject of this photograph and try to create a really simplistic composition. You can use wide angles too. I prefer going portrait aspect whenever I'm shooting panos just because it allows me to get more from bottom to top within the frame and then as I pan from one side to the other it allows me to get more detail within the photograph as I go from one side to the next. So what you basically do is you start on one side and start taking your photograph. So you take your initial photograph and you can either use a cable release, a two second timer, or if you're confident that there's no shake in your camera, you can go ahead and press the shutter with your finger like you may normally do. But you start on one side and you line up the first shot of your panorama. After you take the first photo in your panorama, what you're gonna do is look for something on the side of the frame that you're turning your camera to, to move into the middle of the next frame. So as the sun is setting, I'm gonna look for that sun and where it is, and I'm gonna take my initial photograph, turn it to have the sun 50% within the next frame, take another photograph, look for the edge of that island maybe, and turn that so it's 50% within the next frame. And this is just going to allow you to be able to stack those in Lightroom later without any issues of gaps occurring within your panorama. Because sometimes if you turn too much, you're gonna miss out on a space and it's not going to be able to merge those adequately and you're gonna have gaps within your panorama. You don't want that, so be sure you're looking for those things within the frame that you can move into the middle of the next frame as you turn your camera from one side to the other. All right guys, we've planned everything out. We know we're gonna get a good pano. I'm gonna start shooting because pretty soon the sun's gonna start setting and get right into position. I don't wanna miss that, but here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take these photographs and then bring you into Lightroom on my computer screen in my office to show you exactly how to stitch these photos together in a really, really simple way and a way that adds tons of detail to your photographs. It is good to get in out of that wind. I tried to do this video before, but a huge storm rolled through. Yeah. Imagine filming in that wind. So I just wanted to go through the Lightroom process with you guys real quick. It's a really simple process that you can use to merge these panos together that you shot in the field. So basically what you wanna do first is find the sequence that you wanna shoot. Now I shot a few sequences just to be sure I got everything where I wanted them, but I just wanna navigate and look for anything in the images and the image sequences that may be a little bit off. Like I wanted to use this first sequence that I shot, but if you can tell in this photograph and this one, there's a weird orange glare in the third frame of this pano. So I don't wanna use that one cause it may mess up the merge. So I'm just looking for things that 
uh, may be a little bit off that I can avoid in the photo merge. So I think the second sequence that I have is a really good sequence to use. So all I'm gonna do is select each one that I want to use in the Pano merge. And you can do this a couple ways. You can just click through your Lightroom library and select all of those. You can set these for a certain image ranking, which I like to do. I just hit the one key on my keyboard and it stars all of these. So I know this is the merge that I wanna use. And then all you have to do is right click on those selected photos and go to photo merge panorama and Lightroom will automatically start merging these together in a really nice panorama for you. All you have to do is kind of just wait. So you have several different options when Lightroom finishes merging these together. You have spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. I usually kind of try to stick between spherical and cylindrical. Uh, you can click through these and see which one works better. Uh, I think in this one spherical works a little bit better. You can also select to auto crop this. If you don't select that, you're gonna have some kind of jagged edges on your pano. So auto cropping is always a fine idea. You can crop this yourself if you want to as well. And then all you have to do is select merge and Lightroom will start merging that panorama. And all you have to do is wait a little bit more. This is the part of the photo merge where you can grab a cup of coffee, you can look through other images, you can go play fetch with the dog, but in just a second Lightroom is going to finish the merge and we can move on. Okay, just look at the amount of detail. We're in a one-to-one -one ratio now. If you look up here, this is how much we're zoomed in on this pano. And I mean, the amount of detail that's created by using a pano like this is absolutely incredible. I mean, you can see the smallest details. Look at the, I mean, there are tiny little boats out here that you can see that you've created using this pano. I mean, this was a 24 megapixel camera and now we're at increasing those megapixels so much more than we would have with just a single shot on this image and combining these photos together. I mean, the stitching is absolutely perfect. You can't even tell where one photo ended and where one began the next time. So. So I think this turned out really well, and I know you can use the same type of technique for your own photography next time you wanna shoot a panorama image. I mean, you can shoot panos of basically anything, and this will really help your photography in the long run, creating better images, better compositions, and better photographs overall. So thanks so much for watching this, you guys. Honestly, truly, thank you. I mean, this channel can't exist without you. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. You can comment below on any panos that you've shot in the past. If you have a link to those panos, share the link so everybody can see that. And then also, if you're into landscape photography at all, please consider subscribing to this channel because I wanna make videos like this that are gonna help you be a better photographer in the long run. So thanks so much for watching. If you wanna keep watching videos, I'm gonna put a playlist up on the screen right now that you can click and watch through those videos so that you can learn how to take better photographs immediately. And I'll see you next time in the next video, guys.